Today's video is about parathyroid hormone and a high parathyroid hormone, an elevated or hyper parathyroid hormone and the impact it has on kidney disease. Thanks for watching from one kidney survivor to another. This is healthykidneyinc.com. If you're new to our channel, subscribe where we give science-based information to help you. So parathyroid hormone, what is it? It's, a, it's four glands in your neck and these glands make that hormone which controls calcium in your blood and your body. And in kidney disease, the parathyroid hormone can uh, become inflamed, produce too much parathyroid hormone, throwing the whole, uh, all the calcium balance off in your body. This is called secondary hyperparathyroidism. And when that happens, it accelerates the loss of kidney function at a faster rate. You're also at a much higher risk for cardiovascular heart problems. Uh, and also at a big risk for uh, bone issues, breaking bones. So you definitely want to address this. First thing you want to do is get that PTH tested. So make sure you get the level tested. And if it's high, these are some recommendations, diet-based recommendations, as well as supplements and uh, medication. So protein is the first thing they mention in this journal article about lowering your protein because more protein puts more stress on the kidney. Uh, and so lower protein will put less stress on the kidney, helping that PTH level. One big thing they mention is phosphate additives. Okay, so phosphate additives is phosphorus that's added to products for shelf life, stability. And you really got to look at the ingredients of your package and bought products. So the phosphate list is really, really big. I'm going to read you a couple from a list here, but there's dicalcium phosphate, disodium phosphate, uh, monosodium phosphate, phosphoric acid, trisodium phosphate, sodium phosphate, and it goes on and on and on. But as you can see with all those names, you want to avoid anything with, in the ingredient section with phosphate in it, phosphorus, or anything that has most of that lettering in it, as you can see from my red there. And if it has any of that phosphate, phosphoric, uh, phosphorus listed there, it's something you want to minimize in your diet because that causes an issue too with the parathyroid hormone um, and also with the parathyroid hormone make sure you have your phosphorus level checked okay so very important to have that phosphorus level checked so lower protein watch the phosphates dietary acid load so um, they said this still needs to be looked at further but it looks like it does have an impact dietary acid load is how much acid producing foods you're having so that would be reducing the animal based products your meats um, especially red meats, okay, just reducing the acid load. They also mention a low intake of calcium and vitamin D supplements. So uh, you should be taking a vitamin D supplement either as the D3 form, uh, it could be D2, okay, which is the synthetic prescription form, uh, or you might want to take calcitriol. But first of all, if you take D3, the over the counter form, for the optimal PTH, you want your blood work level to be 50 or above. Okay, 50 is the magic number and a little higher is okay, but 50 is a range area we're looking for you to be at to really control that PTH. Now, depending on your vitamin D level, so have your blood work checked, you could be taking anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000. Here they recommend it around four to 800 units. Uh, but that varies according to everybody's blood work and where you're located, the severity of your kidney disease. So get your blood work tested. They recommended calcium supplements, but I'm not, I'm going to say don't do that unless you get doctor's advice because we're not really using um, calcium supplements too much because of calcification of the arteries. However, always check with your doctor. Uh, so that was the recommendations there. Now, one big recommendation was fruit and vegetable intake that people with kidney disease should have more fruits and vegetable intake, okay? That, that helps, that really helps the kidney and helps that parathyroid hormone. So enjoy all kidney-friendly fruits, vegetables, and large abundant amounts. It's getting towards lunchtime here, so I'm looking forward to a veggie sandwich with a lot of vegetables, a little side salad. Um, so lots and lots of fruits and vegetables. Now, we talked about the, the over-the-counter supplements was D3. D2 is prescription. And now we have a medication called calcitriol. Okay, it's a more active form of vitamin D3. It's uh, more down the line of the conversion. Calcitriol, you gotta get by prescription and your parathyroid hormone should be elevated. So 
Uh, you have to get the blood work in check, and I'm totally okay with calcitriol because it's really like a vitamin. It's really not even a medication. It's more like a vitamin. Um, but even, I'm not against meds, but a lot of people like to take less meds, so think of calcitriol like, uh, like just a vitamin, really. It's a vitamin-like substance in the body, a hormone-like substance, but uh, it's more natural, and it does work better to get your parathyroid hormone level. But you do have the option of trying it with the D2 and D3 first. Um, you still should have that D3 tested along with the parathyroid hormone and your phosphorus. So we covered quite a bit. Feel free to ask questions in the comment section. Uh, go through anything. But those are some diet recommendations, supplements, and the medication that could help an elevated parathyroid hormone. So get started today. Check out all our other videos and articles, over 200 videos on things that you can do to improve kidney health. To your best kidney health, everybody. Bye.